We are back on It's Always Game Day in Cincinnati. Lindsey Patterson, Mike Santagata here. Mike, how you doing? You know, I'm doing better. Yeah, I was sick, and now I'm much better from that. Uh, uh, non bangles related things, you know, like Thanksgiving's coming up. Thanksgiving is coming up. That's a that's a, that's a top top holiday, I think. Eating food, napping, and watching football. That's a great holiday to me. I love Thanksgiving. I'm one of those people where I'm I'm pumped about Christmas as soon as Halloween ends. So everybody's like, don't forget about Thanksgiving. I don't. I love Thanksgiving. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. I think we get a triple header football day and then we get the Black Friday game. So I'm looking forward to a lot of football leading into uh, the next time the Bengals hit the field. This is our first time recording since the Joe Burrow news. Um, obviously, it was the Thursday night football game decided not to record that next morning because we didn't really have any news on what the injury was, if Joe was going to be out for the season. They later, later announced in a press conference with Zach Taylor, heard from quarterback Joe Burrow that afternoon, that he is going to be out for the season. Um, there's a lot of reaction. And as we're recording this on a Monday, it feels like there's all kinds of different emotions that you go through. I think as a fan, as a franchise, and a lot of it is you do have to continue playing football, but let's go ahead and react to the Joe Burrow news at first. You know, how are you feeling about it? You know, uh, it it takes away the cap of the team. You know, there is still a lot of faith in fans, the ability to kind of defense will, you know, when they get to the playoffs, they're a great matchup defense or get game great game plan defense. And, you know, Burrow's looking pretty good. This offense is starting to hum a little bit. Even in that Ravens game, you saw it. Like, the offense is starting to hum a little bit. Uh, and their defense was what it was. Uh, maybe they would have done better with uh, more sustained drives on the other side. But I think that's also an excuse for them. Now it kind of takes the wind out of the sail. It's like you can kind of see the – now there's always a chance that you get a Nick Foles run here. That is a very, very outside chance, <laughs> but it's there. Uh, I th it's funny. I, I, there, there are a lot of people I felt like that were questioning whether the Bengals can make the playoffs with Burrow. So with Browning, it almost feels like people are trying to talk themselves into it, and maybe it happens. Maybe. 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 It's a tough schedule. It's very tough. They still got to play the Chiefs. They got to play the Jaguars. Jaguars? Jaguars? Uh, look. The Jaguars. The Jags, that's right. Uh, they got to play Cleveland again, which they just oh. – it, it would be very – it would be very, I feel like, Cincinnati Bengals to have a great game against the Browns finally, and it's a game that Burrow didn't play. <laughs> you know, I feel like that happens with them. Um, got to play the Steelers twice. Those will be interesting games I, it's starting this week, but <laughs> it's tough. You know, it's just tough when you look at that schedule of like, where are you putting together enough wins to win the a win in the AFC playoff race? Because you know the, the Texans have a tiebreaker over you. You got to play the Jags to see if they have a tiebreaker over you. Because who knows? Maybe the Texans win that division. Uh, you're playing the Ravens have a tiebreaker over you. They're probably winning the division though. Mm -hmm. The Browns, the Steelers, if they get the tiebreaker over you, like where where are you pulling away for the rest of the division? I, I don't know, but. I also think let's not get too down on Jake Browning because he wasn't outright abysmal or anything on uh, Thursday. Goodness. Somebody yeah. fell in with the, I almost said Sunday. Today's Monday. <laughs> it's going slow. Uh, but yeah, it, he hasn't, wasn't outright abysmal on Thursday. There was some stuff there that I thought he played with more anticipation and better process than he did in the preseason. So maybe he's able to keep the train on the tracks. I think what you're really looking for with him, I think what the high end of Jake Browning is kind of like Taylor Heineke, where can he keep the train on the tracks? And then he also just has that chaotic energy to him. Uh, but can you harness that for good? Because, you know, that's, it's just tough. You know, like on one side is – scrambling, picking up first downs and getting out of situations where the defense, you know, like they got you with a blitz or they got you with the right coverage call or something and the wide receivers aren't open and you get out of that and you're able to run, pick something up, make something out of nothing. The other end of that is the bad stuff. And we saw some of that in the preseason too, where he throws the pick right to the Falcons player or something, or, you know, sacks taken, just negative plays galore that, that can come out of that. So if he can harness that for mostly good, and he can keep the train on the tracks, 
this offense should be all right. And I think they're going to try to lessen the load on him because it's a very difficult offense for a quarterback to step in and play. So this is a little bit also of, let's see, you know, everybody complains that I have given this um, coaching staff, not the excuse, but let's say the reasoning of they don't get a lot of motion at the snap and this other stuff, because that's not really how Burrow wants to play. He wants to play a little bit more static and they were throwing a little more motion in there as the season went on and whatnot. But you know, Burrow likes it static. He's kind of has that Peyton Manning idea to him late state later career Peyton Manning uh, of like, I want to see the defense. I want to see that the slot defender has his left foot up and know exactly what coverage they're in. If we motion that I won't know anymore. Whereas Browning, I don't expect him to try to do that type of thing. I expect him to kind of point and shoot where the offense tells him to point and shoot. So let's see it. Let's see what the play callers have, the design has. Let's see if they can execute it. And then can Jake Browning keep the train on the tracks? Yeah, you know, there's a I, – I think you get to a point like, look, it's three, four days later. Uh, Brian Callahan said it best. I mean, the show goes on. You still got a football team that is in playoff contention. They're in the hunt. You look at the CBS graphic all weekend. The Cincinnati Bengals are one of the in hut teams. Um, you know, they do have a lot of the talented pieces. And I truly don't believe in teams saying, you know what? We're going to tank. It's time for a draft pick. They don't think that way. And in the oh. culture, the culture that Zach Taylor has built since 2019 and even 2020 when Joe Burrow went down with the ACL, it, it, it's about winning. You think I, I somebody had uh, they messaged me and they said, You think Jamar Chase can be like, mm, I'm gonna sit this out? No, 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 he's not gonna say, I'm gonna sit this one out. He is a competitor. There's so many talented players, they could be getting T Higgins back soon. I know there's no timetable on if that's definite for this coming weekend on um Sunday versus the Pittsburgh Steelers, but you still have other wide receivers in that room. Trent Irwin, Yoshi is expected to be back this Sunday. Charlie Jones, that gives opportunities to some of these rookies. You look at the running game a little bit. Um, Brown could end up being back and, and Joe Mixon kind of splitting the reps between them on the ground game. Maybe you get a running game going, something we haven't seen most of this season. So I truly, I don't believe in all of that to get a better draft pick. Look, if it ends up working out that way and they can't get any wins together. Yeah. The Cincinnati Bengals are sitting high in a really great draft pick. It's kind of like a very, very, very soft rebuild because there's too many talented players on this team to even put that word in a sentence when you think about the Cincinnati Bengals, because I still think next year Joe Burrow is expected to be fully healthy. Um, you know, obviously we'll get more of a timetable timeline on, on how he's feeling after the surgery. Jake Glazer said this week that he's picking out a surgeon this week. So to be determined on when, when he's back out there and he's throwing the ball, but overall this team, that isn't their mindset. It's about winning football games and it's one week at a time. It's their first time seeing the Pittsburgh Steelers. For some reason, it feels like Zach Taylor has the Pittsburgh Steelers number. And you see the way Kenny Pickett has been playing. Uh, you can make a case that maybe Jake Browning could be the better quarterback on Sunday, which is crazy to think about. And another thing is Joe Burrow is going to be on the sideline for these games. He's going to be there on Sunday. I, I think that's absolutely huge. Um I don't know if he's going to be out there calling plays or anything like that, but having his presence on the sideline is, is different than when he had his ACL injury. He couldn't be on the sideline the rest of the season. So he'll be out there. And I think that's going to be huge for Jake Browning and his confidence, but I still feel like this team is going to try and put it together. Um, you know, it's any given Sunday in this league right now. And yeah, it's really difficult for them. And it would have been difficult if Joe Burrow would have been back dropping to five and five on the season and wanting to get in the AFC playoffs. But I don't know. I, I, I still at this very moment, believe they have a lot of playmakers on this team and even defensively they have some things to clean up but younger guys including Jordan Battle he's going to continue to get reps out there Zach Taylor said that today um really kind of felt like he took Nick Scott's job in the Thursday night football game you're going to see more of the secondary DJ Turner to be determined if Cam Taylor Britt can go out there but I don't know I just I, I don't like that whole get a better draft pick now winning games would be bad for them it just doesn't it doesn't work that way in a vacuum though yeah get a better draft pick get a get a <laughs> I mean, lose enough games to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, like that, that, is, that would be a great outcome out of uh, the Burrow yeah. injury. It's just that you can't convince these guys to do that. I mean, look at the Giants just this past week. They had Tommy DeVito slinging the thing around, winning a game that they sh 
who cares if they win this game? People thought they were tanking, you know, like Tommy DeVito, who, the warthog, who is this guy? And he goes out there as a, well, he takes nine sacks. But other than that, he has a great game. And he they score 31 points. The offense was a little bit of like, you know, let's get the ball to Saquon. But he also threw some deep balls. And I don't know, like that. that's kind of the NFL, you know. Yes, in a vacuum, it would be the best for the Giants to lose the rest of their games and get whatever quarterback they want. Um, you know, Daniel Jones, what it is. Uh, but you know, same with the, the Cardinals, too. And they were competitive in that game. They tried to win that game. You look at a lot of teams, it's like that team would be better off just losing the rest of their games. Well, that's just not how it works. Like they're not going to go out there and try to lose the rest of their games. Even the Bengals, when they had the number one overall pick and they took Joe Burrow. They also kept those games very competitive. They almost won a few of those, especially that Dolphins game, legendary game, uh, which it felt like both teams really wanted to win in regulation. Then over time, I wanted to lose that game. I'm not going to lie. Over time, it felt like that break. They both kind of went like, oh, hold on a minute. (laughs) But yeah, no, like the players were giving it their all, though. And that's just, you've got talented guys, you've got players that are going to try their hardest. Look, guys in contract years. You see Cheeto and DJ Reader and Tyler Boyd and T. Higgins and Jonah Williams. Tanking and losing also requires guys to play poorly and lose their matchups. So now they're losing money. That's just another way to look at that. Jonah Williams isn't going to give up sacks on purpose so that they can lose yardage and the offense will stink and they can get out of there and get a better draft pick. One, he's probably looking out for himself after you know they tried to re- – well, they did replace him at left tackle, and he had to go try to win the job at right tackle. Two, he's in a contract year. Like, he doesn't know anything of the organization. Same with Cheeto. Same with all these guys. Like, Cheeto, you're not going to give up deep balls on purpose so that the other team's offense can score a few points and you can get out of there. Whatever. It just doesn't happen. You know, like, that's just – you can't convince NFL players, NFL coaches. They're wired differently. I'm sure if you talk – and they have talked to them. It's like they think they think they're making a playoff push. And we on the outside can say, like, that's unlikely. But I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just unlikely. Uh it's a tough schedule. It's a backup quarterback, but they have a lot of faith in themselves. They have confidence. And you never want to get to the point of this losing games stinks. Practicing, doing a full-time job and going out there and being a terrible product and not doing as good as you think you can. That sucks. Living that out is bad. And that's why players don't, that's another reason players don't want to lose. It just feels so much better to win. I know that's a really stupid like thing. It's like really simple. It's like, yeah, it feels better to win games. They don't have the fan mindset, the fan mindset and sometimes analyst mindset of lose those games. Let's get a good draft pick. That's just it's just not how it works. So we'll see how it goes. I think they're going to try, though. I think they're going to try to put together a heck of a Cordell Wilson's fighting for his job, probably. You know, like, can he put together a strong final seven games and kind of win that thing back over so that they don't try to replace him? Yeah. And. I don't think he's been bad enough that you have to replace him. I think I think it's one of those, like, let's keep watching. Let's see if he can improve. Ted Karras, it's next year he's with the team, but then he's gone. So there's so many guys you can look at and just go, I don't think they're going to have the long-term view of making the team better and purposely losing games. And even the coaching staff, you know, if Brian Callahan and this offense – puts together 30 point games with Jake Browning, he'll have some interviews to be a head coach. Lou and Arumo, we've talked extensively about it. I hope he gets some more interviews and gets some shots, but he's just not really what they look for at a head coach at the NFL level with like older, defensively minded, etc. And I just don't think the stats were there this year. I feel like now guys like Mike McDonald will get that defensive job or Dan Quinn is always there to try to steal a defensive job. There's just guys out there that's like yeah, that guy's probably going to get a look, huh? Yeah, and offensive guys, much easier to get those jobs. I mean, you can look at the Texans OC right now. I know it's it's Bobby very Sloan. new, very new. I mean, it, it, I don't know if he'll end up getting a head coaching job or a head coaching look, but, you know, you could look at him. You can look at a lot of teams with those younger OCs, offensive minds that'll probably get looked at before Lou. Detroit, but, ben Johnson. Yeah, Ben Johnson. I know a lot of Bengals fans um, – he was the what was he before the OC? 
Ben Johnson. Ben Johnson. That's a great question. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm throwing us off and going totally off topic to the off season. I'm, and that was one thing I didn't want to do. I, I try to find a silver line. And I think you bring up a good point. The players, they're not going to go out there and tank. They're going to try each week. If the Bengals happen to lose all these games, you're in a really good position. And I feel like you're picking top 10, top 12, and you're going to get a, a great player because, I mean, you look at this wide receiver class, you look at the you know other positional groups that they would be able to to add to this offense or even on the defensive side of the ball would be good. So for me personally, you're at this stage right now, you lose your franchise quarterback who is a big part of this team. Uh, he was a pass game coordinator. Okay. I, I- oh, there was a few other ones. So I was interested in one, he took over for Dan Campbell as the tight ends coach for the Dolphins when Dan Campbell got promoted. So I'm kind of like, that's the Dan Campbell pipeline of being Dan Campbell. <laughs> and then, yeah, pass game coordinator. He was a tight ends coach for Detroit for Dan, obviously. And yeah. he was the offensive quality control coach in Detroit. He was a wide receivers coach. So pretty weird, extensive background. And uh, he played as a walk-on at North Carolina. And has a mathematics degree in computer science. You can tell I'm on the Wikipedia page, but I was just interested. But but the couple of things, just kind of just focusing on the season right now, and you, you you bring up the coaches. Look, I feel like Lou's back next year, and maybe I'm I'm looking too far into it, and just the way the season's going. But defensively, this team hasn't been good enough. <laughs> If you're being honest, there's been some things that they've struggled with, too, on the defensive side of the ball. Um, and I don't put that on Lou or any I'm not putting that all on Lou. But, you know, if you look at at some of the stats, it hasn't been going great. And you can blame that on the offense, too, because it's been such a start and stop season for them. Obviously, the four game win streak was awesome. Look at them versus the 49ers. You beat the Bills on Sunday night football. And then obviously everybody knows what happens in the Texans game. And then just this past week, but you lose Joe Burrow in that game. So overall. I think this defense, if it, if it fixes a few of the things that they've been struggling with and and maybe some of these young guys, when you look at DJ Turner out there, you look at a guy like Jordan Battle, maybe that'll refresh some things in the secondary and um, their defensive line. Got to get pressure, got to stop the run. Maybe we'll see that out of these next few games. Um, you know, you get to test a little bit with the Steelers offense, who I feel like their best bet is to run the ball when you look at Kenny Pickett because he he's not the answer in Pittsburgh. Um, so I don't know, maybe, maybe you see more out of this defense. Maybe you see this defense from what we, 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 we've noticed before over the last few years, or even in the playoffs. Um, if you can see that out of your defensive side, you still have the talented weapons. One of the things that I feel like people would always say about Joe Burrow is he's carried by his weapons. And I always felt like it was such an ignorant comment because when Joe Burrow's not out there, this team doesn't look the same. And we'll probably see that over the next seven games. So this Bengals has, has the weapons. They have T Higgins, they have Jamar Chase. They have Joe Mixon out there. Um, let's see what it's all about. Let's see what that does for for Jake Browning. I don't think that they can go on and win five of the next seven games. That would probably put them in the wild card. But it's it's also interesting. I feel like everybody kind of points to Miami, which they get the red zone effect. I think like Miami. <clears throat> I feel like they always have the. Uh, exciting play of like a guy's wide open they, they win they score a touchdown against some bad teams and they rarely beat the Raiders last week but uh how did Mike McDaniel do with Teddy Bridgewater and Skylar Thompson last I think the playoff game with Skylar Thompson was interesting and they kind of kept up but it was bad in those other games so I feel like you can also look at I think some people are going to kind of push the well you know if these guys are good play callers, play designers, then they'll win and they'll look good with Jake Browning. It's like, well, I mean, even the best, if you think that's Mike McDaniel is the best, didn't look very good with Teddy Bridgewater, which is not the worst backup in the league to have. You know, he's a little cooked, but it's not the worst. Uh, Skyler Thompson, oh, you're kind of pushing it there. But uh, I, I just – also feel like i don't know there's there's two sides to this of like one yes i think this is an opportunity for the offensive play callers to show what they've got flex some muscle and be the engine of the offense rather than the quarterback being the engine but two i'm also not fully expecting them to have some great success because you look around the league and most backup quarterbacks don't exactly have a lot of success in the league that's why when Josh Dobbs has like those games, you kind of go like, whoa, Josh Dobbs. Or when some other guys have those games. You're not looking at the Browns in that 
game and thinking like, man, that offense, that was a good offense. You know, Kevin Stefanski really put something together. It's like, well, they, they scored 13 and that was enough to win. <laughs> yeah. That was a terrible game. My goodness. Looking at both the, I see ahead. some people mention like Snoop Putley and the Ravens. That offense was bad with them for most of the time. <laughs> it was just interesting to see like that gets mentioned. I don't know, but I feel like there is just like the idea of like, well, they won those games. Like what's not the offense. That's not why. <laughs> Yeah. So I I don't, I mean, I, again, we'll see what happens in these next games. It, it's honestly one week at a time. And and I, I want them to be competitive because we are going to be talking about this team. I like this team. It's my favorite football team. Um, I want them to be competitive. I want them to win these games. I truly do. If they do not win them, then as we mentioned before, you fall into a situation where it's not terrible. You get a good draft pick. So we'll see what happens. They have the Pittsburgh Steelers coming up. So let's focus on that game. It's a short week for us because it is Thanksgiving. But, um, you know, we don't really have to give a prediction on what's going to happen, but we can at least talk about this game. When you look at this matchup, Cincinnati Bengals return home. Um, normally been playing pretty well there besides the Texans game recently. Jake Browning's first start against this Pittsburgh Steelers defense, which I feel like the defense is still really good. I think that they can put pressure on this offensive line. It's one of the things that, you know, when I think of this matchup is, is what the Steelers have going for them. Um, obviously they have enough to have six wins on the season. Some people would say it's absolutely wild to have a, have this team be six and four right now, but they are, that's just reality. They live in, um, they have a great head coach on the other side, Mike Tomlin, but what do you think is going to happen in this matchup for Jake Browning? Oh man, that's a tough one. I think this is one that the uh, the Jonah people have been kind of like rubbing their hands. The the haters of Jonah Williams have been rubbing their hands of like, ah, uh, this is it. This is the game. You know, <laughs> like this. I'm waiting because he's got to face T.J. Watt 100 of these snaps. <laughs> so that's just yeah, he's probably not gonna have a great game. Uh, the other side, you know, Orlando Brown. I have an okay game against Alex Highsmith. That mm-hmm. is not the cream of the crop. I think he's a good player. I, I don't want make it sound like I don't like Alex Highsmith. I actually do like Alex Highsmith a bit <laughs> for a couple of years where I was like, man, I hate the Steelers got this guy. And then he signed that extension. And my first reaction was like, honestly, it's a pretty good deal. Like I, I thought some people thought it was a terrible uh, extension, but I thought it was a pretty good deal. I think he's a pretty good player. Anyway, I still expect Orlando Brown to hold his own, if not win that matchup. I think that's, he is clearly dealing with his groin injury, but the uh, you know excuses only get you so far. You know you gotta also just produce. You're paid to produce. You're paid to be on the field and produce. I just also want to give the context of the injury possibility because he was playing better before that injury. I think that injury hit, and suddenly he moved from being pretty good to being one of the lower members of this offensive line. Um, Interior, too. Cam Hayward, that was Cordell Volson's worst nightmare last year. Can you improve on that? Can you put up workable play? I also just, man, the Steelers' defense is – the thing that's annoying to me is I was a big – I liked Keanu Benton a lot, and they got him. I like Joey Porter Jr. a lot, they got him. <laughs> so there's some guys in there It's like, yeah, I wish the Bengals would have taken that swing, but – is what it is. We move on. Uh, I also do that with the Ravens too, because when I watch them, I'm like yeah, Tyler Linderbaum, that was uh, that was my oh, guy. Could you imagine? That would be great. That would be a fantastic get. But you know, is what it is. You move on. I think there is like a soft reset possibility. Thinking of Tyler Linderbaum, like the Ravens kind of got Linderbaum when they weren't that great. You know, can the Bengals get something similar when they're not that great? And that's not to say you have to be a number three overall pick to get that guy. You don't need Marvin Harrison Jr. for this to work out. You don't, um, but man. But it sure would be it fun. It would be the LSU wide receiver. I'm not trying to get – I'm not trying to talk draft right now, but – I have not watched a single guy, so I have no real opinion. Okay. I think it would be interesting to get one of those offensive tackles everybody likes, though. I'm like, oh, that would be interesting too because there's such a highly paid offensive line – but they're not paying Joe Tooney. They're not paying Teron Armstead. They're not paying Brandon Scherf, the guys that were the top of the market value. They needed so many average players that it ended up costing them one of the top five most expensive offensive lines in the league. So that's how I feel about that stat. It's like these guys are solid, but that's also what you're getting out of them for the most part. Um, anyway, moving on. Yeah. Except, We're going to do this for seven I'm weeks. I'm so far no, off, of, off of the train tracks. I, I did not stay on the train tracks. You know, I failed the Jake Browning uh, thing here. I'm hoping that he looks okay. I, that's what I'm guessing is 
this might not be perfect for him. I think there's going to be some pressure, but guys got to produce guys got to perform. Can T Higgins play? No idea. Can Jamar chase beat with the Steelers throw at him? Absolutely. Um, can Tyler Boyd provide Jake Browning a security blanket? Maybe. Can Tanner Hudson show that he's worth putting on an active roster? I think that's a big one. You know, guy that's been a practice squad guy that bounced around. This is his opportunity to be like, put me on the roster, you know, like give me a job. He's fighting for his job out there. Yeah. And, and, and guys like Yoshi, who's going to be back for this game and Charlie Jones is back. Do you think we could see a little bit of slot for one of the wide receivers out there? You know, you, you have to start thinking a little bit about what your offense is going to look like in 2024. I, I still feel like they had another wide receiver in the draft, but overall, these young guys, you drafted them for a reason. Do you expect to see something a little different with the offense when it comes to the rookies? I'll be interested in that because I think there is a line here of trying to compete and trying to get young guys experience. Now with the Burrow injury, do you kind of push it a little bit the other direction where they have been trying to compete? They have been playing Trent Irwin. They have been playing these guys, you know, like the established starters and the established like players as much as possible, but you know what you got there. So can you give Yoshi Voss some of those snaps? Can you give uh, Charlie Jones some snaps and give Boyd some breathers? I don't know. I, can you give Murphy and Osai some more snaps? It's it's interesting. I This will be the first game, so this will kind of set the idea for me of are they going to kind of stick with what they've got and just put Browning out there? And I don't mean that from a schematic point. I mean that from the guys around him. Personnel-wise, he's just going to – just drop Browning in and put as much talent around him as possible and guys that know what they're doing as possible. Or are you going to let guys make mistakes and let young guys kind of learn as well? Cause that feels like can chase Brown get some snaps because the game's moving fast for him. I don't know. I I'm interested to see this will be, this will be the game. My expectation is almost that they're going to kind of just keep the established guys in mm -hmm. there, but I I'm hoping that we get a little bit more from the young guys. And maybe they wait until it feels like maybe they drop this one, they drop the one next week, and they're like, you know what, we're out of it. It's going to be really impossible for them to to get in the playoffs until they're maybe mathematically eliminated. Because um, I would think you would have to win five of the next seven, and that is very difficult. Um, you know, look, anything can happen. It's the NFL. I, I don't think, you know, there's a lot of talented teams right now this year. And it's kind of crazy to say because there's a lot of talent. And, well, obviously, when you look at the record in the AFC North, um, it's been pretty difficult this year. Obviously, the Cincinnati Bengals sitting at the bottom. But I, I think they're going to – I agree with you kind of putting just the the talent that they already have. We'll probably still see Trent Irwin out there. Um, T. Higgins, I don't know if he's playing in this game. I think that was a question mark when, when they talked to Zach Taylor today. We're recording this on a Monday, so that's to be determined. But Jamar Chase will be out there. Best – best receiver on the field um probably the best offensive player that's going to be out there on Sunday but I don't know we'll see what it looks like maybe they get a run game going I think that's going to be extremely important and something for the future that they have to look into I know they want to pass the ball when you have Joe Burrow out there and it makes all the sense in the world when you have him but you you got to establish a run game and that's something that I feel like they don't have yet um when you flip sides to the Bengals defense I was kind of down on them a little bit. I was like, man, you got a you got a, a lot of missed tackles. You got to stop the run. And I feel like with this Pittsburgh Steelers offense that they're going to try and run the ball. That would be smart for them to do. Uh, but when it comes to Kenny Pickett and 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 the pressure, and maybe we see a little more of Miles Murphy and Joseph Asai out there. Trey Hendrickson is an absolute animal with this hyperextended knee. Um, what are you expecting to see when it comes to even the secondary against this Steelers offense? Uh, so my first thought is the secondary against the Steelers offense. Can their quarterback challenge them? <laughs> and that's actually a question I have about Jordan battle, which I think he played well in the mm -hmm. game Thursday when he came in for relief, but I don't think Lamar tested him too much down the field. So, I mean, is Pickett the guy to do that? I don't know. Maybe, 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 probably not, <laughs> <laughs> not from watching last week, but I, I want to see it. I want to see. Let's see the ball skills. Let's see you versus a guy one-on-one, -on -one, ball in the air, what happens. Let's see your ability to help out your corners and play deep of the deepest of the deep and play midpoint and uh, cover two or even play quarters and match guys. I want to see some of that. 
Uh, and I don't think that they challenged him too much in the Baltimore game in terms of the passing offense. They challenged him in the, in the run offense, and he passed. I think he passed that test, but new test every week. And I, w- I want to see him challenged, but mm-hmm. at the same time, I, this is probably not the week it'll happen. There are games against the Chiefs coming up, so so yeah. he probably will get challenged in that game. That is a, that is a tough one. Um, on the road. I also want to see him take on blocks from like tight ends and whatnot. I, I don't think that happened too much in that Ravens game either. And that's something Nick Scott was not good at, uh, was taking on those blocks from blocking wide receivers and tight ends. So let's see it. Let's see. They're using Allen Robinson like a power slot. Let's see Jordan Battle versus Allen Robinson. Let's see Jordan Battle versus Pat Fryermuth. I'd probably prefer not to see Jordan Battle versus Darnell Washington. That is a guy who is an extra offensive lineman out there. But if it happens, I sure hope Jordan Battle holds his own. Uh, I think that this is a good time to see what they've got in this young secondary, even if this team isn't going to challenge them too much down the field. When it comes to pressure, do you think they're going to get pressure on, on Kenny Pickett? This is a great test. I don't know if Sam Hubbard plays or not, but Broderick Jones being and Dan Moore being your two tackles here, they're beatable. Mm-hmm. especially Dan Moore and Trey Hendrickson has gotten the better of Dan Moore, like every time they've played, but I want to see miles Murphy against Broderick Jones, two first round picks. Let's see, let's see what they've got each one. And on the flip side, let's see him against Dan Moore too. That's a lower end tackle. I want to see Joseph Osai in that same situation. And even I want to see cam sample in that situation. I want to see cam sample actually rush from the interior a little bit too. And can Zach Carter show anything? Uh, my guess on getting pressure is, yeah, they'll get pressure, but part of that is just that's Trey Henderson against Dan Moore. That, that, that has been a process that has worked the past couple of years. Yeah, we'll see what happens in this game. You know, I I, I just feel like if you're the Pittsburgh Steelers, you're going to want to rely on, on running the ball. Um, and for the Cincinnati Bengals, you know, offensively, I, I do, I do expect them to, yeah, it's exciting to have guys like Charlie Jones and Yoshi, who's still been a part of this offense. And obviously it was Charlie Jones first game back last week, but you know, you, you do want to see some flashes and, and maybe they try something different. Maybe we get the flea flicker that we've been asking for. I don't know. This would be just a fun game to use it, or maybe they keep it in their, uh, their bag for 2024 when it comes to Yoshi Bosch, but, um, we'll see what happens. I just, I don't know. The thing is, and and I know we've said it before, you hear guys like Jamar Chase, they said it in the locker room when they were talking to the media on Friday. You hear Brian Callahan talk about it today. The season goes on, and it's difficult when it's your your star player and it's your franchise quarterback um, and a guy it feels like this team is is built around. Um, I do think it's going to be huge, and 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 maybe maybe it seem it'll be minor in the end. But having Joe Brown on the sideline will will be will be big for Jake Browning, um, at least for his confidence. I feel like just having a guy like that. I know he was out there in the second half, but things were a little different when you didn't, you know, you had a lot of unknowns on what's going to happen with Joe. Um, and I don't know any any kind of closing thoughts on the last four to five days for the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah. Um... I'm hoping that we see a little little T action in this game, um, but that's injury related. I don't know. I want to see guys play well. I want to watch good film. I want to watch good product on Sunday. I don't. I don't even know how much I care if they win these games. I just want them to look okay mm-hmm. in the games. I want them to look improved on the defensive side and I want them to look functional on offense. There's nothing worse than I feel like the opposite end of that where the offense is terrible, it's unwatchable, and then the defense has given up big plays left and right. Seven games to go. Jake Browning's first start coming up this Sunday versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Let me ask you this one question because I can ask it with seven games to go. If you could pick you say you don't care about the you know the outcomes. You just want to see good tape. If you could pick one game for the Cincinnati Bengals to win, which one would it be? Great question. I mean, easy. It's easy. 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 Where do you? The Chiefs. I mean, you're picking the Chiefs. I'm picking the Chiefs. I don't even care about the division. It's it's you can lose every game. I, I just I do it, it doesn't bother me. Um, just because Joe Burrow's not out there, I say beat Jake Browning beating the Chiefs would be. Icing on the cake. Maybe they're fighting for the number one seed and the Bengals are like, mm, we still have this. That is certainly a fun game. Would you imagine? I, it'd be like Zach Taylor's Monday night football game from 2020. 
I mean, I, I would probably go with uh, either this week or the other Steelers game. I mean, that's still where my <laughs> – which, which I mean, this question was basically, which team do you not like the most? <laughs> yeah, it pretty much – or, okay, so if, I, if it wasn't the Chiefs, it would be for, like, the Cleveland Browns. Maybe it's the game to get into the playoff. And knock, the Bengals are yeah, like – that's a fun one, too. Like, knock them right out. Browns, that would be kind yeah. of fun. Browns um, miss the playoffs because they lose to – Jake Browning. That is a fun one, but that's a scenario. Like they could be clinched at that point. They could be, they really could be, but uh, yeah, no, I'd go for the chiefs. I think that look, anything could happen. They could be overlooking them in that game. Uh, Cincinnati's going, I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I kind of agree with you. I think you can find some silver linings. It's been a, a definitely blow. It's really disappointing um, because I do feel like when, when Joe Burrow is out there, this team has a chance every single week. Um, I felt like they had a chance uh, the way he was rolling in the second half or in the first or the second quarter. Oh my goodness. Um, against the Baltimore Ravens. It felt like the offense was getting something going and it just, I don't know. It's unfortunate. Hope Joe heals quickly. We'll obviously keep updated on surgery, the timeline when he's back out there throwing again, but for the Cincinnati Bengals team, I agree. Just keep it competitive. If you don't win these games, you're in a really good spot when it comes to the NFL draft. If you're in these games, then fun. We get something to talk about and week by week, they still have a shot in the playoffs and maybe they can um, play spoiler. So we'll see what happens, but uh, what's going to be up on all Bengals. Uh, Jordan battle article. Hopefully I think I'm going to have it out by the time you're listening to this. So uh, check it out on all Bengals. Go check it out. All Bengals. Make sure you follow Mike. He has really good breakdowns. Obviously the Cincinnati Bengals lost that game to the Ravens, but I felt like you had a lot of good things to point out on some of the defensive players, offensive players. Go check it out on Twitter. Bengals underscore Sand. You can follow me at LNDS Patterson. Thank you. As always, I hope everybody has a fantastic Thanksgiving and thank you for listening to it's always game day in Cincinnati.